So in this video, we are going to install a local server known as Liragon. And if you have other local servers such as Exam or Local by Flywheel or any other local server at all that you have, we are going to use that to create our website. Now the purpose of the local server is to ensure that we have one that will serve web pages to others when they visit the website. And so we are going to have just a typical example of what will take place on the internet. Now that we have our Liragon local server downloaded and installed, the next thing to do is to install WordPress. So we open our Liragon application. Then before we take any action, you see that we have start all here. We have to click on start all so that it starts certain components that will make the web server work. So we click on start all. Then as you can see here, Apache web server has been started. Then the MySQL database has also been started. Then we can now proceed. So you right click on any empty space at all here. Then you click on quick app. Then you click on WordPress. Then you give your project a name. In my case, I'll name it my store. So you can use any name for your project. Having done this and clicked on OK, we wait for the process to get completed. So the database has been created. Now what is happening is that the Liragon application is extracting the WordPress files so that the WordPress will get installed for us. So after waiting for a couple of minutes, you get to know that the extraction will get to 100%. You have to make your computer allow this operation. If there is a command that you should allow it, you should do so. If you don't see any command, you can go down to the task bar and you see a command, a Windows command processor. That is if you are using Windows. Whatever operating system you are using to, you'd see a similar command so that you allow the process. So once you click on the task bar, the Windows command processor down there, you now be able to enable it. Click on yes. We see that our WordPress has been created and this is the generated URL. So the name of my project is my store. Hence the URL generated or the website address generated is my store.test. And that is what I'm going to use. If I go to visit sites, this will open with my default web browser. So visit sites. So here we are going to complete the installation of WordPress. Here we are being asked to add some few details such as the site title. So what is the name of your website? I'll just name my own, my online store. Then username and enter a password too. Then you enter your email. Then the next thing to do is to click on install WordPress. These are the credentials that you use to log in, your username and your password, or your email and your password. So keep them safe and ensure that you remember the credentials that you've provided. Then you click on install WordPress. Then you should see this success message that the installation has been successful. So the next thing to do is to log in with the credentials that you just provided. My username and then my password. Click on login. You see that after you click on login, you are taken to the dashboard. You'll be able to manage your website from the dashboard. So this is the URL of your website, my store.test. Depending on the name you give to your project, you may have your project name dot test. So in this case, my website address is my store.test. And so this is where I see my website. But if I want to go and edit the website to make changes to the website, I go to my store.test slash WP admin or my store.test slash WP login dot PHP. Whereas my website address itself is my store.test. So having done this and uploaded the contents to a remote server, a server where we would now pay for our hosting 
and make sure that the website is live and others can access it it will now be something like mystore.com slash wp admin or mystore.com slash wp login dot php now because we want to be managing the website from the dashboard we want to have at least two tabs opened so that we make the changes at the dashboard here and have a look at the website on the other tab so if you hover over the name of your website in this case is my online store you click on visit site open it in a new tab by right clicking and selecting open link in new tab then you see that it has been opened here so this is how our website looks like that's the nature of the website but we said we are going to create an online store so why do we have this yes this is the beginning so we are going to proceed and install a theme that has the features of the online store that was shown at the outset so let's get started so we are going to install a theme an online store theme and this is my downloaded file so check the description of this video and you find the link to download this theme now, after you finish downloading the theme you extract the file so right click and then extract the files if you get an error message that the path is too long what you can just do is to cancel the process then rename it to anything because the file name is too long you can now proceed with the extraction extract all so after extraction you have to extract further right click and extract further after the second extraction you have the theme folder here if you open it you see various folders and files what we are going to upload is inside the theme files so open the theme files folder you see two main zip files here we have toko and toko child we are going to use the first one that's the main theme and this is the child theme so we are going to install the first one so you can just drag and drop it on the desktop so that you can have easy access to it this is the name of it so that it will be easier to locate when we want to do the uploading so let's go to our dashboard go to appearance and click on themes we are going to add a new theme so we can use this add new button here or the one below here click on it then go to upload theme then you browse for the file this is the one you are looking for you double click on it to upload the next thing to do is to click on install now and wait patiently till the installation is complete the next thing to do is to activate the theme so that it becomes the current one so you click on activate so you can see that the active theme is the one that we just installed and activated yes so what we are going to do now is to start installing plugins and you have that notice here you just have to click on this begin installing plugins command the installation of all of these at the same time so we click on this checkbox here to check all of the others then we go to bulk actions up here click on that and go to install then click on apply and wait for a couple of seconds to have the plugins fully installed at this point we've had all our plugins installed successfully so the next thing to do is to activate the plugins we go back to the plugins installer by clicking on return to plugins installer so select all of them click on bulk actions then activate click on apply to make all the plugins fully functional and wait for the activation process to complete now the plugins have been installed and they have been activated so let's return to the dashboard by clicking on this 
return to dashboard or better still the one here any of them will send us to the dashboard and of course we are still on the dashboard but this process has refreshed the whole dashboard because all the plugins have been activated and they are showing in the dashboard they can now function and make the website work successfully so the next thing we have to do is to install demo data if we move to the right and go to our website and we refresh the website either by clicking on the refresh or the reload icon or pressing on f5 if you are using firefox browser you see that the website has changed slightly but this is not exactly what we are looking for so what we have to do is to install demo data so let's go back to the dashboard and we go to appearance and then we click on import demo data so this importation process will help us to make our website look exactly like how we expect it to be after which we customize it to suit our needs then we are good to go so we have two page builders here in fact they are all working in the theme but we have to just choose one of them so just click on the first one click on import then also give confirmation to that yes so you click on yes import so this may take a couple of minutes so you patiently wait for the demo imports process to complete so you see that the demo imports has finished so now that we've finished importing the demo data let's go back to our website to see the changes made so we can go to our website and refresh it or enter our website address once again and we see this amazing online store created for us so this is what we have done so far and what we have to do is now to customize this website this online store we have to add categories to it then we also have to add items or products and their prices so we see that here we have various categories of the products the products that we are going to sell online so we have women's clothing men's clothing and a whole lot and under each category we have other subcategories that we can use now depending on the kind of store that you are creating we may want to change all these categories and replace them with your own categories and so we are going to do that so first things first before we get started to changing the categories and adding our products and all that we have to first configure some settings and if we go back to our dashboard this particular plugin that you see here WooCommerce. This WooCommerce plugin is actually the plugin that turns our website into an online store. So we have to configure it and set up the whole store with our settings. We go to dashboard you see run the setup is located here or we can equally go to the WooCommerce settings and do it there. That is WooCommerce here then we go to settings. And do it so each of these approaches can work so we go to run setup wizard yes so we are going to provide the address of our store so provide your details choose your country in this case i'm choosing ghana your so country and region write the city name and postcode and there's a checkbox here if you are setting up this store for someone else you can check this box if not then just proceed continue in which industry does the store operate you check the one that is your industry in which you want to sell your products you can choose more than one and then you continue what types of products will be listed so the first obviously is physical product would you provide downloads as products for sale you may want to check or otherwise if you check all these and you think you use them these are add-ons you will have to pay so maybe we can skip these and of course because our focus is on physical products we just select this and probably add this one and we just click on continue 
how many products do you plan to display so let's choose the highest number possible because the store will grow eventually are we currently selling somewhere else so that we want to probably import our products to WooCommerce because we are starting everything from scratch we may want to choose no we may want to disable these options here and continue click on continue with active theme so there is a notice here whether we want to enhance our store with a plugin known as jetpack it really has a lot of cool features so the moment we agree to it it will be installed so we may want to accept this if later we realize we may not need the functions of jetpack we can just deactivate that plugin